Good evening. Welcome to the second Wednesday in our season of Lent. We will follow the order of service as it is laid out for us in our bulletin. And we will just go along with this. And again, we get to use these midweek services to remind us of why we are in Lent. It is to focus on who and what we are as sinners, knowing that only in the cross of Christ we are the saints that he has redeemed and called us to be by his work. So blessings on your Lenten travels in the midst of remembering and worshiping in the midst of all of that. Let us begin with our opening hymn. It is hymn 418. Please stand. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness. Joyous light of glory. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who led your people Israel by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, and lighten our darkness by the light of your Christ. May his word be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, for you are merciful, and your whole and you love your whole creation and we your creatures glorify you father son and holy spirit
Let us pray. Let the incense of our repentant prayers ascend before you, O Lord, and let your loving kindness descend on us, that we, with purified minds, we may sing your praises with the church on earth and with the whole heavenly host, and may glorify your name forever. For you liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gethsemane, Jesus prayed alone on bended knee. Father, help me this I fear, that my time is very near. In the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed alone on bended Listen to obey, teach me to be brave and true, show me what I ought to do. In the garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed alone on bed in me. Father, not my will be done, but your will and yours alone. Savior, teach me day by day, love sweet lesson to obey, sweeter lesson cannot be. Love Our reading this evening comes to us from St. Mark, the first chapter. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. O Lord, have mercy on us. We continue with our next hymn, Hymn 419.
Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Gracious Father, bless us and continue to prepare us in the faith in which you have given to us in and through the Holy Ghost that we may see, have, believe in what has been given to us in Christ our Lord, which is nothing less than forever and salvation in you. To this end, use the words that flow from these lips to proclaim your great mercy. In Christ Jesus, amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we continue in our Lenten travel to Easter, and we have these four short verses. Uh, we have the first two marking the temptation of Jesus and then the beginning of Jesus' ministry after John's arrest. We get to see this as we move to and towards Easter. We get to see what God has done in Christ our Lord for us. And especially in, these, in the last verse, and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This verse is a, a wonderful thing to hold on to. It's a wonderful thing to place our hat upon in the simple idea that we have the promise that the kingdom of God is at hand and our Lord is the only one who can say this in full fulfillment because where Christ is, there is the kingdom of God. And he shows up and he starts proclaiming and preaching and he makes that very statement, I have arrived, I am the sent one, I am the one promised from the Old Testament. Remember all your history, remember all the prophets, how they pointed to the Messiah, how they pointed to the one who would come to rescue, to save, to bring you into the true promised land. I am here. Believe and live. Believe in this gospel. Repent so that you change from your ways and have what is being given to you. We get to say, well, of course, this is what we get to do. Of course, this is our past. This is our history. This is what we get to simply believe because Jesus said so. But there is so much more happening in these verses that, that bring weight to Jesus' statement, the time is fulfilled. When Jesus speaks of this, he is stating that he is the one who has come. He is the one who is taking on our sin, living our life, fulfilling all righteousness and law. And he gets to really point backwards and say, I have already started. And it is with these first two verses, we hear that the, through the Holy Ghost who drives him out into the wilderness and for 40 days and 40 nights, he is tempted by Satan. And what's interesting about St. Mark's account, unlike um, St. Luke's from Sunday, we have just two verses and we don't really have an end. It doesn't say, and the temptation stopped and Jesus then moved on. We have this kind of hanging situation where we have, he's being tempted by Satan and it doesn't say that he stopped tempting Jesus. And we also hear that, and he was with the wild animals and the angels were ministering to him. It is in these statements that we see that Jesus comes in the true humiliation of what he is. He is a true servant. He comes to do what Israel could not do, live perfectly even in the midst of temptation. And not only that, but he goes because the Holy Ghost leads and guides him. He goes because that is the will of his father. So he takes on this servant role. He takes on this subservient way and listen and in true and pure obedience goes out in the wilderness and suffers what Satan tries to do to him. And we see that he goes through and he is able to withstand each and every temptation. After all, this is the God of God, light of light, very God of very God. And we see that Satan is not able to overwhelm him. And then in this next little phrase, man, he was with the wild animals. And this carries so much meaning because we have the temptation of Jesus. But if we look back just a little bit further, we get to see that when God created all things, all things were perfect. Everything was in harmony. 
and we have the wild animals once again. And who shows up but God, the Lord of creation. And he is there out in the wilderness. And with these wild animals, he shows that this is the life that we get to look forward to. One of restoration, one of harmony, one of peace. We get to see this little glimpse of paradise. Once again, creation restored. The wild animals that we fear, let it, uh, that, that will tear, that will rip, that will eat. These are the animals that we will no longer fear in paradise because creation is restored. And again, continuing with the whole servitude, the angels were ministering to him. Jesus allows the angels to come and minister to him, to take care of him. After all, angels are the messengers of God, and they come to minister, they come to help, they come to serve Jesus during this time, again, to show the place that Jesus has taken, the one who serves, the one who receives help, the one who carries us into this servant role. And when we look at this, especially in connection to our Lenten theme, looking back at the Holy Cross, we get to see that in pure obedience, he comes to do the fulfillment, the true fulfillment of what took place on the cross. He on the cross fulfills what we could not. That is the suffering of the punishment for each and every disobedient act when we did not act in the servanthood that we should, when we did not receive the ministering of the angels who proclaim, the angels who give, the angels who point out what and who God is for us, how we miss what is given to us in our daily life. For we so often live just for the moment, for the simple desires of the flesh, we succumb to the temptations that are placed before us. But thanks be to God that our Lord did not. And he comes to us this evening and announces and pronounces the time is fulfilled because we get to look back at the Holy Cross and we get to see what has been completed for us. And we get to do that very thing that our Lord commands us to do. We get to repent, but we don't repent with heavy hearts. We don't repent grumpily. We don't repent because Jesus said so. No, we repent because we know that this is salvation. We repent because we know that God has come and opened the door to us to heaven to the delights of forevermore we are changed and this simple word of repent means to change to turn and we turn away from our old ways we turn away from the temptations that are laid before us we turn away from our disobedience and we believe the gospel that has been laid before us in christ our lord it is why we have these midweek services to be reminded that the gospel is here for you. And because it is here for you, we not only get to live in this gospel, but we get to take this gospel out. And you, the people of God, the members of Holy Cross, <coughs> get to go out and be examples of this gospel. By no means does it mean that you thus go out and live the perfect life. No, you go out and live the repentant life. You go out and live the faithful life, clinging to the works of Christ on the cross for your salvation. This is the humbleness of who and what we are and what has been given to us in baptism. <coughs> and it is the new life that has been restored, the new life of harmony that we have with God. We have the true peace that passes all human understanding, the peace that was laid out for us in the love of God. Let us rejoice in this. Let us go forth as we continue in this Lenten travel with the cross, the reality of the cross and the fulfillment of God and Christ our Lord for our salvation behind us so that we get to look forward to the resurrection and to the life that awaits for us, which is forevermore in his presence. This is yours in the faith created and sustained by God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.
Amen. We continue with the gathering of our offerings. Please stand. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. For Matthew, our Synod President, and Timothy, our District President, for all pastors in Christ, for all servants of the church, and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for Donald Trump, for all public servants, for the government and those who protect us, that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed, let us pray to the Lord. 
for those who work to bring peace, justice, health, and protection in this and every place, let us pray to the Lord. For those who bring offerings, those who do good works in this congregation, those who toil, those who sing, and all the people here present who await from the Lord great and abundant mercy, let us pray to the Lord. For favorable weather, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and need, let us pray to the Lord. For the faithful who have gone before us and are with Christ, let us give thanks to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our Lord. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. We continue with our closing hymn, 880.